A hurricane is developing in the Gulf of Mexico, and this is expected to bring some big impacts to areas in the United States over the next few days. This includes the potential for life-threatening storm surge, flooding rains, hurricane force winds, and tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly where this particular storm will be heading, where it'll bring impacts, how intense it's going to get, and also what we think will happen after it makes landfall, including the potential for tornadoes. As of right now, this is what our system looks like. This is called potential tropical cyclone six which is expected to be named tropical storm francine probably by the time you're watching this forecast if not sometime later this morning or during the afternoon hours right now it is just a lot of convection that is all associated around near a low pressure center that's trying to develop right now the reason why this is not officially a tropical storm at least when i'm recording this is that there is really no organization yet of this convection it's all just kind of blowing up there's really no spin with this either quite yet but once this starts to spin a little bit more this will likely become a tropical storm. As of right now, it is producing maximum sustained winds right around 50 miles per hour, which would be consistent with a tropical storm. But again, it's just lacking tropical storm characteristics, at least as of right now. Now, this is expected to move north over the next 24 hours. It's going to be a very slow journey, I think, between now and Tuesday morning. But by the time we go into Wednesday, this will start to move much faster in the direction of Texas and Louisiana and likely make landfall Wednesday evening. Now, we will mostly just be talking about the storm that is developing right now in the Gulf of Mexico. I did want to point out though, we do have two more areas of development out in the central Atlantic Ocean. These both have medium to high chances of development over the next seven days. Currently not expecting any impacts to the United States out of these two, but obviously we are still very far out from any of them being near the country, but we will keep a close eye on this activity in case it does make an appearance near the United States. All right, let's talk more about potential tropical cyclone six. This is the latest advisory. Notice right now the maximum sustained winds at about 50 miles per hour. This is where it's located. It is currently in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Again, this very easily could be a tropical storm by the time you're watching this, but no matter what, it's basically the same thing. By the time we go later into today, so right around tonight, we're going to continue to watch this move very slowly to the north as a tropical storm. There are already tropical storm watches in effect for parts of Texas and also back into parts of Mexico. Now, as we go into Tuesday, this is going to start to intensify a little bit more. Once we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning is when I think the greatest intensification will happen which is when we could see rapid intensification occur. And what that means is that we could go from a strong tropical storm quickly up to a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane as this continues to move to the Northeast. Now, the National Hurricane Center forecast is that this will make landfall somewhere along the Texas or Louisiana coast Wednesday evening. Personally, I do think this will make landfall in Southwest Louisiana. That's where I think it will make landfall at this point based off the data that we have. With that said, I do think there, there is a pretty high likelihood that this will at least be a Category 1 hurricane hurricane. I could see this becoming a Category 2 hurricane, though, sometime between Wednesday morning all the way through Wednesday evening. So definitely be mindful of that. The winds basically will be a bit stronger. Storm surge will also be slightly more significant. I think the worst of the impacts are going to be felt right along the south coast of Louisiana and in southeast Texas. Once we go into Thursday, this will move inland, eventually weakening into a post-tropical cyclone, moving right up the Mississippi River. One thing to keep in mind is that we'll have probably at least one, if not two days of tornadoes across parts of the southeast, which will talk about here in just a second. Before we go into the future radar and also other scenarios that could occur with this, I do want to show you the HAFSA model. The reason why I'm showing you this is that these types of models are specifically made for hurricanes. So these usually give you an accurate representation of intensity and also usually where it makes landfall. So this is what it looks like by tonight. This will start to intensify a bit more to a 994 millibar or so low pressure center. For reference right now, it's just over a thousand millibars. Once we go into tomorrow morning, this will eventually start to intensify further. The HAFS model does have this going down to 981 millibars. It does some crazy stuff and actually rapidly intensifies this Tuesday night down to 961 millibars. Now, I don't know if this is exactly going to happen, but this is a possibility. In this case, this would indicate something like a very strong Category 1 hurricane, but in most cases, this is either a Category 2 or low-end Category 3 hurricane. Once we go into Wednesday morning, this starts to move to the north further and eventually goes towards Louisiana. This is right around lunchtime on Wednesday. Wednesday. Notice how we are hours away from landfall in Louisiana. It actually starts to weaken just a hair as it approaches Louisiana. And then eventually, as we get closer to about three to six o'clock, it makes landfall somewhere around 967 millibars, which would be in the level of a category two hurricane. And then once we go into Thursday, this continues to move to the north. These outer bands in Alabama and Mississippi will be the ones that we have to watch for for an elevated tornado threat. This is the spaghetti models, which give you an idea of essentially where computer models are bringing this particular 
Solar Storm, and right now they are very, very, very consistent on where it's going to make landfall. It'll either be somewhere in southeast Texas or southwest Louisiana. Now, keep in mind that this is very underdispersive, meaning that they're all going basically to the same area. We could definitely see this go a little bit further right or left, which is why the cone is a bit larger than, you know, you know what you might think it would be looking like, but the reason why is because we could see some wobbles last second if this does actually end up rapidly intensifying, and all the models essentially bring this right up the Mississippi River, so we will probably at least see some rain across parts of the Ohio Valley and Dixie Alley as we go into Thursday and Friday. Now, this is the latest intensity guidance from several different computer models. A lot of them right now bring this to a Category 1 level. This is an uptrend, by the way, from yesterday's forecast. There are a couple that bring this to a Category 2 level. I still think as we go throughout the day today, this could very easily go up closer to a Category 2 level for several of the models. Wouldn't be shocked, again, if this does become a major hurricane, at least briefly, sometime either late Tuesday or early Wednesday. Now let's go through the future radar for the next several days with the GFS model, which is a deterministic model. It does show a bit more of an intense scenario when it comes to the intensity. This is what it looks like for Tuesday morning and afternoon. Notice how it's, again, intensifying in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Eventually, by Wednesday morning, we will see some of the outer bands reaching the Texas coastline. The good news is that I think this will stay far enough offshore to the point where we're not going to see flooding rainfall. I do think storm surge will definitely be a possibility with some gusty tropical storm force winds. Once we go into Wednesday evening, this starts to move in the direction of Louisiana. Notice how landfall currently forecasted to be sometime probably between 4 and 11 p.m. on Wednesday. So again, that's going to be during the afternoon and evening. I do plan on being live here on the channel for landfall if this does indeed make landfall Wednesday afternoon or evening. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we go live. And we will also have storm chasers out there covering this on our stream as well. This is what we're looking at by Thursday morning. It moves inland, producing mostly just a lot of rain. The good n nature really about this is that this will probably move pretty quickly, meaning that the overall flooding threat will not be nearly as significant as it could be for areas like Louisiana. And then by the time we go into Friday, this continues to move to the north. Now, in terms of total rainfall accumulation, the GFS model highlights the greatest rainfall being in Louisiana, Mississippi, and southern Alabama, where upwards of 6 to 12 inches of rain will be possible. This could shift a bit further to the west, so just keep that in mind depending on the track. If this track's more like this, the majority of the rainfall will be on the east side of this hurricane. So keep that in mind. If you're back over in Texas, again, the rainfall does not look that substantial, no matter what the track is, unless this makes landfall in southeast Texas, which even if that happened, if it made landfall near Beaumont, the majority of the rain would still be mostly in Louisiana, just due to the nature of the track of this particular uh, hurricane. This is what the future radar looks like across the Ohio Valley. Notice how this moves inland Thursday morning. I could see there again being the potential for a tornado outbreak on Thursday in Alabama and Mississippi, but that still remains a bit uncertain. By the time we go into late Thursday into Friday, we could see another round of severe weather and mainly tornadoes across Kentucky and Tennessee. That, again, remains uncertain. Honestly, I don't think Friday is going to be that big of a day. And then after Friday into Saturday, this just kind of fizzles out, at least according to the GFS model, which, again, still a little bit uncertain at this point. These are the hodographs. The reason why I'm showing you this is that this gives you an indication of how much spin we're going to have in the atmosphere, which could lead to tornadoes. I think Thursday will be mostly a threat across Alabama, Mississippi, maybe western Georgia, and perhaps southern Tennessee. And then Friday, if we continue to see those outer bands, you know, penetrate across parts of the Ohio Valley, we could see another setup, you know, evolve across parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, and as well as Alabama. That still remains a bit uncertain since we are just, you know, a couple days out here. It's definitely still hard to tell where this tornado threat may set up. But those are the two days that I'm watching for any sort of tornado risk. Now, as a reminder, we will likely at least have one live stream this week. We may have a live update tonight or tomorrow, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, and as well as make sure you click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live for live coverage. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below, and again, subscribe if you're not already.